Well, tax transparency in Africa 2020 report is uh, a key output of the Africa Initiative, which uh, was launched in 2014. The Africa Initiative is a strong partnership between the Global Forum, its African members, and a number of regional and international organizations and development partners who are represented here today. This initiative was launched, uh, launched because we believe uh, that transparency and exchange of information for tax purposes are powerful weapons in the fight against, against tax evasion and other forms of illicit financial flaws. However, those tools were much less used on the African continent. Therefore, the objective of this initiative is to unlock the potential of those tools for Africa by ensuring that African countries are well equipped to exploit um, the improvements in global tax transparency, to stem illicit financial flows from Africa and raise resources for the development of African countries. The Africa Initiative is open to all African countries and currently it has 32 African member jurisdiction and is supported by 11 partners and donors. The Tax Transparency in Africa 2020, Africa Initiative Progress Report 2019, takes stock of the progress made by African countries and reflects upon the remaining challenges. It provides comparable statistics on tax transparency as one of the responses to the issue of illicit financial flaws and also serves as a repository of information on tax transparency and exchange of information for decision makers and citizens. By enhancing the abilities of African countries to tackle tax evasion and other forms of illicit, tax transparency supports the achievement by African countries of the sustainable development goals of domestic resource mobilization, as well as the African Union Commission's Agenda 2063. The critical role tax transparency can play will be even more pronounced in this aftermath of the economic effects of COVID-19, as African countries seek to improve their domestic resources mobilization efforts. To conclude, I would like to thank all the African members of the Global Forum and the three non-members for providing data and information to make this publication of the report possible. I also thank the partners of the African Initiative for their commitment and support aimed to an, at ensuring that African countries participate more effectively in and benefit from global tax transparency. This work was also made possible thanks to the financial support of the European Union, France, Norway, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. I take this opportunity to also thank the following distinguished panelists for finding time to attend this virtual event and make a few remarks on tax transparency in Africa. Okay, here today we have uh, Professor Victor Harrison, Commissioner for Economic Affairs, African Union Commission, Mr. Pascal Santaman, Director of the Center of Tax Policy and Administration at the OECD, Ms. Saidas Manata, Head of the Global Forum Secretariat who will present the report. Mr. Logan Ward, Executive Secretary of the African Tax Administration Forum. Mr. Abdullahi Koulibaly, Director, Governance and Public Finance Management at uh, the African Development Bank. Mr. Marcelo Estevao, Global Director, Macroeconomics, Traded Investment at the World Bank Group. And Mr. Jean-Marc Miel, uh, Secretary more French is not good, Secretary General de, de Credaf. And now um, let me take, uh, the, take the pleasure of inviting the first panelist, Professor Victor Harrison, to give us the African Union Commission's insights of this Africa Initiative and the Tax Transparency in Africa 2020 report. Thank you very much. And Professor Victor, you have the floor. Uh, I repeat, <laughs> thank you and uh, good morning and good afternoon. Thank you to, to invite me 
to, to present the, the point of view of uh, African Union Commission. The first 10 year plan of uh, African Union Agenda 2063 includes the path to follow to establish all of its flagship projects. To uh, achieve these, uh, these projects and uh, this uh, support for implementation of a first 10 year plan, the African Union needed to develop a resource mobilization strategy. And the strategy recognized tax revenues and combating illicit financial flows as major source of a finance of the implementation of Agenda 2063. I give you a, one example of a flagship. Infrastructure development annually recurs an estimate between, in dollar, uh, 130 billion to 170 billion for the infrastructure development. In this regard, the continent must mobilize resources to support the implementation of uh, Agenda 2063. However, the tax to GDP ratio is relatively weak in Africa and have remained at 17.2% over the last three years. This, issue, this situation is due to numerous administrative, institutional, and legal weaknesses. For instance, IFFs cause to cause the continent to lose an estimate you know very well uh, in dollar 50 billion annually. All these resources not full attained and lost can contribute immensely to the implementation of Agenda 2063. But the international tax cooperation through exchange of information between tax authorities is a crucial tool to counter tax evasion and evidence and facilitate international cooperation and transparency of corporate bodies. This allows tax authorities to reach out to offshore source for information for taxation purpose, thus strengthening tax systems and increasing the desire for tax compliance. As evident by number of African countries who managed to recover resources from a exchange of information, Uganda, for example, recorded in dollar 14 million in 2015, Tunisia 2 million in 2018, etc. The economic recovery needs a lot of funding. So, the African Union Commission is supporting the Africa Initiative of, on Tax Transparency in order to assist member states to stop outrage and policy and to take charge of its own destiny by changing the paradigm for the financing of its own development. This is my, my first intervention. <laughs> if you want, I can continue. <laughs> no, no, no. no I think okay. we have, we have a, a very short uh, time for, for everybody. So thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting and very useful, the, the information. And then let me, let me give uh, the floor to Pascal Santalan. 
director of the Center of Tax Policy and Administration. Pascal, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, Maria Jose. I'm sorry I have a, a disruptive animal with me, my cat, who absolutely wants to participate to the, to the Transparency Initiative in Africa. So apologies for the disruption, but very happy uh, to uh, participate uh, and uh, to, be, um, to be with you. Um, listen, this is an extremely important initiative, and I would like to thank Zaida for having made uh, this event uh, happen in spite of COVID uh, and in spite of the difficulties. So we don't have the pleasure to meet physically, uh, we don't have the pleasure to interact uh, and uh, to, uh, to exchange uh, food, to exchange good moments uh, in life. But uh, it's extremely important in spite of the situation, or I would say because of the situation, that uh, we, we work to improve transparency everywhere in the world and in Africa in particular, because Africa is more vulnerable than many other countries. It's um, revenue uh, or the revenue collected in African countries is extremely low uh, and below what is needed for development. There is a ratio uh, which is around 17%, but which ranks from 11 to uh, more reasonable rates above 20%. Uh, and I think there is more or less consensus to say that below 20%, there is a real issue of, of development. And, 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 and this low level of revenue is, is due to many factors, but one of them, and that's an important one, is transparency. Because as long as there is no transparency, there are capital flows. As long as there are capital flows, there is the inability of tax administrations to tax the income of the people and the companies operating in their countries. And without that, you cannot improve the tax morale and you're losing even more so. And, and VAT cannot be the solution, especially with large informal sectors in the economy. So if we want to get a virtuous circle, there is a need to improve transparency. So it's one of the key factors for uh, the development of African countries. We are extremely happy uh, to have <clears throat> a growing membership from African countries. Uh, 32 African countries, if I counted well, are members of the Global Forum. We have 25 members of uh, Base Erosion and Profit Shifting Inclusive Framework. Um, and um, this is um, an opportunity for having a growing voice for African countries, not only in the peer reviews of um, uh, the inclusive framework of the Global Forum, but also in the standard setting. Also in, in redirecting the work in a way which fits African countries with their own challenges, including the level of, of uh, capacities, uh, which, is, which is below many other countries. But at the time of, of the digitization of tax administrations, there may also be some opportunities uh, to, to take there. And transparency, for sure, will be needed. Uh, access to the information of your residents when they hold uh, offshore uh, accounts, uh, and that's the core of the global forum, but also information on transfer pricing policies of administration and all the tools developed uh, and now offered uh, to African countries, the multilateral tools can be used uh, not only for uh, putting an end to bank secrecy, but also to enact uh, the um, tax uh, legislation. So, of course, uh, beyond the standard setting, beyond the legal instruments which are available, may I just remind you of the fact that the multilateral convention on mutual assistance in tax matters now have 137 members, which means that every African country which will now join this instrument will automatically get 137 partners with which there will be exchange of information on request, with which there will be uh, exchange of spontaneous exchange of information and with which possibly there can be automatic exchange of information. So that's, that's extremely important because that's concrete. But concrete as well is 
the technical assistance. The fact that the Global Forum since its inception, and, and I, 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 I do remember that it was one of my priorities and was very glad to see that Monica Batia, uh, my successor in the role, uh, took over that uh, work and mission and that Zaida has made it one of her priorities, uh, that we have uh, good technical assistance, that African countries are invited to join the Global Forum, not to be reviewed, not to be assessed, but to be accompanied, to make sure that when they are reviewed, they, 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 they have a successful rating because they would get all the benefits of uh, the uh, changes in the legislation. So the capacity building aspect is, is key. If we want to combine them both, we need tax administrations involved, and, and so are they. And let me thank again, uh, as always, our friends from ATAF and, and Logan and, and his team in particular, but Victor also uh, and the Commission, because uh, we have a renewed impetus in the relationship, uh, which uh, we are very grateful uh, for. Um, so tax administrations, but also tax policy makers. And, and it is true that sometimes we do struggle in Africa to reach out to the finance ministers. Tax commissioners we have, finance ministers we don't have that often, and that's a pity and uh, something we need to work on. Uh, I would like to conclude with uh, uh, two, two remarks. Uh, one is about uh, the very concrete results of all this. It's about cash. At the end of the day, as tax administrators, you need to collect taxes and exchange of information beyond the fundamental transformational changes it will bring uh, is also bringing money. So for African countries, more than 500 million euros have been uh, additional uh, uh, revenue have been collected uh, through exchange of information, which is which is big for, for the 32 African countries members of the Global Forum. Another initiative which now is moving towards assisting countries in using exchange of information on requests or automatic exchange of information is the Tax Inspectors Without Borders. And here for African countries, we're already above uh, 300 uh, million euros with, again, uh, the, the wish because it's a request by African countries uh, that uh, we would um, uh, provide assistance on tax crime matters, uh, which are very often related to individuals defrauding uh, tax administrations, um, but um, also uh, in, the, in the area of, of, of assisting countries uh, in using automatic exchange of information when they get it. The, the last word is about the global um, environment. Uh, you know that we're working hard on tax and digital, on establishing uh, a global minimum tax, that's the so-called digital work. It's difficult. You may have heard that the US said we need more time because of COVID, we need more time because there is a US election. For once, uh, the US stance is not far from what uh, developing countries and African countries in particular were seeing, saying we need a bit more time. So let's take more time, but not too much time because we need to address that. But when addressing the tax challenges, the digitalization of the economy, I think, especially at the time of COVID, at the time of the collapse of the world economy that unfortunately we need to recognize, uh, we need to do more for developing countries. Uh, that's what I like calling a pillar three. You know, we have pillar one on digital, pillar two on global minimum tax. I would like to see a pillar three emerging, uh, which would be BEPS for developing countries, but that's for you in Africa and elsewhere to set this agenda up. You can count on the support of Zaida and her team, of myself and my team to accompany you and support you uh, into that direction. I will stop here and wish you a very good uh, event, uh, which is already on social media and have some good coverage. And thank you very much for your trust, uh, for your support. Uh, and for the very good work we do. And I really, really look forward to seeing you in person uh, quite soon uh, in your countries or in Paris. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you for your remarks. I mean, uh, and thank you for the offer that the OECD and the Global Forum uh, has given to the, to the African countries. And next, uh, we have Ms. Sanata Manata Saida. Um, she will present uh, the report. Saida, please. 
Thank you, Maria Jose. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here with all of you uh, to uh, launch the Tech Transparency in Africa report. Um, I must say up front that this is not a global forum um, product. This is the product that is the result of uh, of the engagement and uh, and uh, the, the efforts of uh, all the countries that participate in, in it, as well as our partners and our uh, our um, um, development partners. Um, it's with great pleasure then that I will present the results of this report. Um, the genesis of the tax transparency in Africa uh, is to be uh, found in a, simply, in a simple observation. African countries suffer great loss from illicit financial flows. Uh, the estimation, as uh, Professor Harrison mentioned, is between 50 and 80 billion dollars per year. Uh, it diminishes uh, African countries' tax base and undermines their domestic resource mobilization efforts, which means that there is uh, less revenue for governments, for investments, and uh, for the benefit of the people in Africa. But what is exactly illicit financial flow? Uh, we are talking here about cross-border financial transfer, which contravene uh, the laws. Uh, and uh, tax evasion is a a crucial part of it. Uh, for instance, the fact that 44% of African financial wealth is estimated to be held offshore raised several questions. But one of it is, uh, what could be done if uh, um, it, uh, it corresponds to tax revenue? We estimate that around 17 billion euros is lost every year because of this uh, phenomenon. The link between tax transparency and the illicit financial flows is supported by research uh, undertaken and by uh, documented literature. And uh, the common um, feature in this literature is that the fact of in those instances where transparency is shouted is uh, in uncertainty. The rate, the rate of uh, illicit financial flows is high. Uh, transparency and exchange of information for tax pur purpose are uh, powerful tools to combat tax evasion and other illicit financial flows. These tools are widely used uh, around the world. Um, however, and, uh, in uh, African countries, they are not using these tools at the same extent as other countries. And uh, the benefit of using these tools have been uh, uh, presented in the last decade and uh, uh, cooperation um, among tax administration is a key instrument to uh, improve uh, um, transparency and to raise revenue collection. In uh, 2014, as uh, mentioned by Maria Jose, uh, the Global Forum partnered with, uh, with its African members and a number of regional and international organizations and development partners to launch the Africa Initiative. And the goal was very clear, was to unlock the potential of tax transparency and exchange of information for the African continent, ensuring then that uh, African countries are equi equipped to exploit the recent improvements in global transparency. Uh, focus in, on uh, Africa enables the identification of a specific approach and uh, the provision of tailored support to address the specific needs and the specific features of African country and support them in their efforts to grow their capacity. Today, the Africa Initiative is a strong and well-established partnership of the Global Forum. It's uh, 32 African members and 11 regional and international organizations and uh, uh, development partners. Since uh, 2014, the Africa Initiative has been built around two strategic axes. The first one is to increase uh, uh, political awareness about the benefits of transparency and exchange of information, and so gain the political buy-in and commitment from African decision makers. With our partners, we have promoted tax transparency through high-level events and the meetings with African ministers. We are glad that now we have 29 African ministers of finance join the Yaoundé Declaration, which calls for tax transparency agenda. Political attention and commitment are essential for the second strategic axis, which is to develop the capacities in African countries uh, to benefit from uh, transparency and exchange of information. We have assisted 
the African countries to strengthen their legal framework to ensure their, their availability and access to information. And uh, we are also helping them to improve the organizations of their tax administrations, in particular to the setting up of an equipped and skilled uh, exchange of information unit. We are also providing trainings to officials and uh, auditors to effectively use these tools to tackle illicit financial flows and eventually increase the domestic revenue mobilization. This annual report, is, uh, which is in its second edition, um, measures the progress uh, made in Africa. We have uh, 30 out of our 32 members um, participating in this initiative, and also we have three non-members jurisdictions that participate in this report. They are Angola, Guinea-Bissau, and Malawi. Let's now uh, delve into the findings of the tax transparency report in itself. Um, the main outcome of the first strategic axis of this initiative is the growing number of African countries involved in the, in the work of tax transparency. In uh, 2009, uh, which, uh, which is the year where the Global Forum was uh, um, reformulated and, uh, and uh, re redesigned, uh, only four African countries were members. Now we have 32 members. Um, the last joiners are Guinea, Namibia, and Mali. And it shows that the country level engagement is strengthened and uh, the African Union Commission has helped in this, uh, in this uh, uh, work. And uh, um, as indicated by Professor Harrison, the African Union is committed to playing a leadership in, this, uh, in the implementation of uh, transparency and in keeping the discussions at the high political level in Africa. In addition, as mentioned before, we have uh, 29 countries uh, joining and, uh, and adding their way to the um, Yaoundé Declaration. The Yaoundé Declaration is an important instrument that calls for strengthening African countries' participation in international efforts to fight tax evasion through transparency and exchange of information. The second outcome of the first strategic access is that uh, now exchange of information is clearly a priority for African tax administrations. Um, out of uh, the 33 African jurisdictions that provided data, we know that uh, 21 um, consider this a high priority for their administrations. And this is a, a, a remarkable change if you compare to 2014 when um, 18 countries said it was not a priority, it was a very, it's not a, a, neither a medium or high priority, it was a low priority for them. And only six considered that a high priority. The outcomes of the second strategic axis for the Africa Initiative are also very meaningful. First, African countries are building the needed infrastructure to use the exchange of information to tackle tax evasion. This trend is positive, as you can see, across all the board. Um, the delegation of the function of competent authorities for exchange of information from the minister to the head of the tax administration is progressing from seven in 2014 to 22 in 2019. Um, the establishment of a unit to be in charge of the day-to-day -day operation is growing. Uh, we had five in um, 2014, the year of the launch of the Africa Initiative, and now we have uh, 20. The number of staff allocated to this work increased more than fivefold between uh, this period. So in 2014, we had 25, and now we have 132. Um, the exchange of information networks of African countries also expanded significantly. Now we have more than 3,000 bilateral relationships. And uh, you can compare that with uh, around uh, 900 in 2014. And this is mainly due to the number of African countries, as mentioned by Pascal, that joined the Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matter, the Multilateral Convention. African countries which the convention is enforced can now request information from other peers to carry out their cross-border investigations and they can also uh, move one step forward and have automatic exchange of information. Tax administrations cannot use their domestic powers to obtain information available in foreign countries without these instruments. 
So to, uh, to fight cross-border tax evasion, they need access to information. And so uh, they, they, uh, uh, it's not only sufficient to have the instruments, but also it's necessary to use it. And uh, in 2014, African countries were not doing that at all. You can see that they unbalanced it between the number of requests sent. You can see in blue on the first uh, graph and the request received. Um, in origin, the first graphic, it, the, the gap is uh, is huge. At the same time, uh, around the world, developing countries were intensively using this uh, tool. Since 2014, the 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 scenario is different, uh, and now exchange of information has uh, significantly increased, and the balance the imbalance is reduced. For instance, the number of requests sent by African countries in blue in the first graphic increased by 48 percent between uh, just the 2018 and 2019. However, uh, the use of this tool is un highly uneven uh, among African countries. Um, in 2019, we had only four countries that uh, responded for uh, nearly 75 percent of all these requests. In sum, there are still progress to make in using these uh, these tools by African countries. The request sent directly translated into additional tax revenue, and that's what counts at the end of the day, as, as mentioned by Pascal. And uh, we have five African countries identifying nearly $12 million in additional revenue, and uh, in total, eight African countries secured 189 million of additional revenue uh, between um, uh, 2014 and 2019. It's good, but it's not enough. And uh, automatic exchange of financial information has dramatically changed the arithmetic of cross-border tax evasion around the world. Without any prior request, jurisdictions have, uh, uh, that have implemented this standard, they now, have, uh, they now are receiving information on an annual basis of the financial assets uh, held abroad by their tax residents. Globally, around uh, 102 billion euros have been identified through uh, voluntary disclosure programs and uh, investigations of uh, abroad, etc. And this was uh, done prior to the first automatic exchange of information. And uh, these figures include 27 billion for developing countries. In Africa, Nigeria reported $82 million and South Africa, $296 million. A few African countries have started exchanging information automatically between 17 and 19. They are Mauritius, Seychelles, South Africa, and Ghana. Nigeria is expected to start exchanging this year, and assistance uh, has been provided to other seven African countries, which are at different stage of the implementation process. Some of them are considering the appropriate date uh, for the first exchange. Others are more advanced in their preparations. For instance, uh, Morocco is, uh, may, start, may start exchanging in 2021. And the important thing here is that these countries must send information, but also receive the information. It must be reciprocal. So even if the first step is to exchange, uh, uh, just provide the information, countries must move forward and also equip themselves to receive the information and to make proper use of it. African countries have started this journey. But a lot of effort is still needed to unlock the potential of uh, automatic change of information for Africa. In 2019, the capacity building activities continued to in intensify. Um, 12 African countries benefited for, from uh, intensive mentoring. Over um, 20 um, countries received tailored assistance to respond to their specific needs. 30 capacity building training events uh, took place uh, in Africa since 2015, and over 1,000 tax officials from 44 African countries have been trained. The Global Forum and its partners will continue to support African countries to address the, the existing gaps. The work of the Africa Initiative is, uh, is well established, but it's just the beginning. The tax transparency agenda is moving forward. And uh, the biggest challenge now is to continue supporting the uh, African countries in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic, knowing that tax transparency will be key 
and the post-COVID recovery. With our partners, we have developed new ways to deliver assistance and uh, dem as demand is still there, so we need to answer to this demand. For instance, in the first semester of 2020, around uh, 500 officials were trained through virtual class. We are also providing assistance uh, remotely through uh, WhatsApp, uh, video conference, uh, Skype calls, whatever uh, means that uh, pro, uh, help us to reach out to African countries we are using. And uh, for 2020 and beyond, the main areas of support should be the implementation of the beneficial ownership information, the beneficial ownership standard, and uh, automatic exchange of information, which will help African countries raise domestic resources. To that end, political and high-level supports are needed to raise awareness and to engage countries, um, as well as capacity building activities. I would like to thank all the 32 African members of the Global Forum and the three non-members for providing data for, for working with us and to making possible the publication of this report. We also thank our partners and we also thank our donors, the donors of the Africa Initiative for their commitment and support to ensure that the African continent participate more effectively and the benefit from the global forum, uh, from the global tax transparency and, uh, and the global forum um, assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saida. Thank you very much for highlighting the, the main outcomes of the report. Uh, and now let me let me go back to, to the next um, to the next um, participant, Mr. Logan Ward, Executive Secretary, African Tax Administration Forum. Please, Logan, to have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Jose. And thanks to Zaida for that presentation. It's our pleasure as ATAF to uh, be part of the launch of the Tax Transparency Report for this year. And also to be associated with the partners, uh, the Global Forum, the OECD, and the African Union, um, but also the African Development Bank, Credof, and the World Bank, uh, really, really crucial partners in this journey. I think, as you hear from the report, the developments around tax transparency and the impact on the revenue is critically important because domestic resource mobilization um, through tax collection remains the number one priority for African countries. And the many efforts that jurisdic jurisdictions are making to fulfill their mandate is constantly affected or hampered by the challenges associated by global transparency. So this report comes at quite a difficult time because it's a time of COVID-19, the COVID pandemic, and the socioeconomic effects of that, um, as Pascal says, has made uh, states quite, quite vulnerable, but it also has placed additional burden on revenue authorities to collect more. And so it's important to have joint efforts such as this um, in the climate where revenue collection becomes a priority for everyone. In the bigger scheme of things, global collaboration like this is critically important. It's important here in the Global Forum where we work together to establish competent authorities, develop the legislative and other frameworks. Um, we've not been so well in supporting the technological requirements of it, but be that as it may, this type of collaboration is critical because it goes to the bigger issue of the global tax share. And that global tax share is a very central part of the current discussions around the taxation of the digital economy. And so for us in the continent, it's important that we increase our global tax share either through how taxing rights are allocated, which is what we are currently discussing on the digital economy issues, or by the domestic instruments that we develop and making use of global instruments such as uh, the MAC or uh, participating in the exchange of information mechanisms. Because it's not something we often uh, talk about, but in the bigger scheme of things, the distribution of domestic, of the proceeds of domestic revenue has a very important impact on the social contract everywhere. But in, in Africa, particularly, historically, the social contract between citizens and the state 
has been precarious. Um, and so distribution of tax revenue uh, helps to eradicate the inequality and the social injustices that comes with this disconnect. Um, and so it helps with better income distribution, and we know that. And so as part of the global recovery, uh, there's a lot of pressure on African economies. Just yesterday, the South African uh, Minister of Finance introduced a supplementary budget. And I think in the country where the ATF head office is here in South Africa is in a kind of state of shock because never has this country's debt to GDP rate ratio been 80%. Never has the possibility of it going beyond 100% in the next 18 months been as real. Uh, and that is the kind of recovery so, uh, symptomatic of where um, African economies are, especially in the recovery of in a post-COVID environment. And so this report is important because it set out very key success factors for transparency and exchange of information. And it recognizes that offshore tax evasion remains a global challenge for everybody. Money, sorry, Zaida. Zaida has... Uh, highlighted a number of important statistics out of the report, including the fact that uh, EOI requests on the continent increased by 48% through this program. Full-time staff dedicated to EOI units, important to note on the continent, from 79, 2018 to 132, 2019. It's important progress is not enough, but it's important progress. Um, of course, an important element about ERI units on the continent is that competent authorities in many African countries are located in the Ministry of Finance. And that has resulted in quite a disconnect in terms of information exchange and the usage of that information for audits and other things. And so a big part of our technical assistance program has been to help relocate uh, the competent authority back into the into the tax administration. We've also seen in the report some significant amounts said to have been collected, as uh, Zaida indicated, both South Africa and Nigeria, and the numbers there, 296 million US dollars and 82 million US dollars, respectively. But importantly, the report speaks about co political commitment. And so, in our view, the implementation of the recommendations of the high-level panel led by President Mbeki is critically important. An equally, if not more important part, is the need for a continental forum to discuss tax matters because we do not have one. We've got ATAP, but ATAP is not an intergovernmental forum as, as, as a structure that uh, can be and should be governed by the African Union. And so it's very, very, uh, I'm very happy with the participation of Professor Harrison as the AU Economics Commissioner because we must have a firm direction for a continental body to discuss tax matters under the auspices of the AU. So let me finally just say that um, we do have challenges in this whole uh, exchange of information, debate and work, and one of it is political support. The other one is uh, the, 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 the amount of pressure and resources that it takes to deal with the countries who've been blacklisted by the European Union. Now, these blacklists don't uh, only apply to uh, jurisdictions with regards to uh, 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 the peer reviews uh, on exchange of inf uh, information. No, this is about BEPS, and BEPS is a voluntary uh, thing. But we've had to spend a lot of time helping countries get out of this blacklisting process. It puts a lot of challenge. The other one, Monique, uh, Zaida mentioned about beneficial ownership. I think it's important that we encourage and, 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 and drive through this issue that implementing beneficial ownership legislation will deal with a lot of the issues, including money laundering and, 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 and complex structures. And those are some of this. And so ADAF and the Global Forum must continue to establish the EOI units, must continue to, to help reforming the legislation and building the competent authorities. In conclusion, ATAF commits to continue with its work that we do with our member countries. Currently, we're working with Zambia, Uganda, Botswana, Cameroon, Lesotho, and Kenya. 
And also we're dealing with a range of capacity building programs with the Global Forum and also in, in our own and in our own programs and continue to build competent authority. And like was indicated by both Pascal and Zaida, um, we are proud of the results that we have been able to get over the last few years through the exchange of information program and other international tax programs. We've concluded about 60 of the 186 orders that we've done, and we're part of the group that has assessed over 1.3 billion US dollars in taxes of which 300 million is already in the bank. And so we must continue this work. This report must empower African governments to strengthen their exchange of information capability. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Logan. And thank you, Ataf, for this uh, collaboration with the Global Forum. And now, now let me introduce Mr. Abdullahi uh, Koulibaly, uh, Director of Governance and Public Financial Management at the African Development Bank. Mr. Koulibaly, please. Merci beaucoup, uh, uh, Maria. Uh, je souhaite uh, dire bonjour à l'ensemble donc de ses participants et aux collègues. Good, uh, Comme ça a été dit, c'est avec beaucoup like de plaisir uh, qu'on je vous retrouve tous uh, cet après-midi, même si c'est un peu à, 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 à distance. Uh, uh, aussi uh, remercier donc uh, Zaida et les collègues du forum uh, pour vraiment Zayda ce travail que nous considérons comme étant un uh, travail accompli. Uh, dire que la banque est vraiment heureuse uh, d'être associée donc à cette uh, uh, initiative. Uh, je voudrais commencer par uh, like confirmer vraiment l'engagement de uh, la Banque africaine really, uh, de développement à travailler avec les partenaires au développement bank, pour uh, the, the, the ce, uh, cette question que nous considérons comme étant vraiment cruciale. Uh, Et ça tombe tellement bien que uh, la crise uh, actuelle donc, uh, de la COVID-19 euh, nous interpelle. Est-ce que nous voyons que la majorité de nos pays se sont retrouvés du jour au lendemain dans des besoins très, très euh, importants en termes de financement donc, des dépenses sociales euh, urgentes et que la clé est vraiment donc, la mobilisation des ressources. Et les pays qui ont des difficultés à mobiliser des ressources sont les pays qui ont le plus donc, des difficultés à répondre donc, les be aux, aux besoins de ces populations. L'économie euh, so, est dans une situation euh, difficile. Par contre, les dépenses, notamment donc, au niveau du secteur social, santé donc, euh, et les transferts donc, aux populations les plus vulnérables, euh, on a vu que dans la majorité de nos pays, sont vraiment une contrainte euh, importante. Donc, pour confirmer en fait que le travail que nous sommes en train de faire est le travail qu'il faut faire pour aider les pays à relever l'un des défis les plus importants pour les pays africains, donc qui est la mobilisation des ressources. Et comme ça a été rappelé, le, le, le taux de mobilisation des ressources par rapport donc, au PIB pour ces pays sont effectivement très, très euh, faibles. Donc, si vous permettez, donc, je vais juste euh, commencer par dire que l'engagement des pays à travers le Forum mondial, euh, on voit donc ça a été dit dans le rapport qu'il y a vraiment aujourd'hui la dernière, dernière trois pays additionnels, donc maintenant on est à 32. Ça veut dire qu'il y a un très grand pas, euh, mais c'est aussi dire que sur les 54 like pays africains, il reste 22 qui ne sont pas encore membres donc, donc, du, du, du forum. Donc, euh, ensemble, c'est de continuer ce travail pour amener de plus de pays à s'associer à cet exercice, et comme je l'ai dit, qui est un exercice important. Concernant le cadre, euh, donc, euh, je pense que le rapport le dit, hein, il y a eu beaucoup de progrès. Ah, et notamment en termes d'engagement. Nous sommes tous d'accord que maintenant le défi, c'est au niveau opérationnel. Et, euh, donc, le niveau opérationnel, ça dit quoi C'est qu'il y a pas mal de pays qui ont encore besoin d'améliorer le cadre institutionnel et le cadre juridique. Et c'est avec donc, beaucoup de plaisir que nous voyons dans le rapport ce qui a été fait, les acquis, et en quoi ces acquis vont permettre en fait, peut-être aux pays qui n'ont pas fait suffisamment de progrès d'être suffisamment donc, sensibilisés sur le fait qu'il est important donc, de faire cet effort nécessaire pour bénéficier donc, de l'assistance du forum. Mais surtout, ça a été dit, le fait qu'on a pas mal de pays qui ont vu les revenus augmenter. 
there are a number of countries who have en fait, je pense dans beaucoup de pays de donner un élément palpable aux décideurs donc qui sont convaincus and, uh, et notamment très souvent nos collègues au niveau des administrations uh, to, uh, 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 fiscales uh, qui sont convaincus mais peut-être qu'ils n'ont pas toujours le soutien politique nécessaire donc pour aller de l'avant donc sur ce point vraiment donc c'est saluer donc le travail qui a été fait par le forum mais comme on a tous reconnu il y a un travail important qui reste à faire et donc par rapport à ce travail important je voulais souligner que la banque a adopté en 2017 son cadre de lutte son plan stratégique et son plan d'action pour la lutte contre les prix financiers illicites qui définit dans quelle mesure donc la banque peut accompagner ou quelle est notre stratégie en la matière mais surtout qui met en avant le fait que pour cet exercice, il est, il est important de travailler de façon très, très rapprochée avec les autres partenaires au développement pour pouvoir avoir des, 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 des résultats. Nous avons commencé l'année dernière donc un exercice pilote avec le Forum au Sénégal qui commence à porter ses fruits et nous pensons que c'est la bonne initiative de vraiment identifier ensemble dès le début donc les besoins spécifiques et voir dans quelle mesure c'est en fonction du, de l'avantage comparatif de chaque partenaire au développement continue de sa proximité, continue son portefeuille, continue son type d'activité dans le pays, qu'est-ce que le pays peut faire. Donc dans le cas spécifique donc, du Sénégal, nous accompagnons donc le travail fait par le forum pour aider les Sénégalais à améliorer donc le cadre juridique et le cadre institutionnel donc à travers un projet d'assistance technique. Et nous pensons que c'est un travail qu'on peut multiplier donc dans d'autres pays. Et je pense que c'est une initiative qui commence à apporter donc ses fruits. Euh, avant de finir, je vais peut-être, euh, ça a été dit, donc pour nous, le point peut-être le plus important aujourd'hui, c'est l'engagement politique. Et le fait qu'aujourd'hui, on a l'Union africaine donc, qui se met donc, au devant de la scène pour euh, amener donc, les pays à un niveau politique très élevé, euh, conduire ce dialogue, me semble effectivement un travail très important. Parce que nous sommes tous d'accord qu'en matière de réforme économique et financière, très souvent la difficulté dans nos pays, c'est vraiment mettre cet agenda comme étant un agenda le plus important par rapport aux différents défis qui sont importants pour notre pays. Donc le fait qu'on a un niveau donc, élevé au niveau donc, de l'Union africaine, et ça permet peut-être à nos décideurs à ce niveau, au-delà des décideurs techniques, de prendre cet agenda comme étant un agent important. Et au-delà de ça, je pense aussi que ça nous permet à nous tous de nous mettre d'accord quelles sont les priorités. Et comme je l'ai dit, il y a beaucoup de défis. Si on se met d'accord sur les priorités, ça va plus facilement nous permettre d'aller de l'avant, de circonstruire en fait le niveau d'intervention. Et je pense que les rapports nous rappellent qu'est-ce que le pays doit encore faire. Et dans ce cadre, comment on peut travailler ensemble donc avec ATAF et avec les autres partenaires comme la Banque mondiale. Donc, moi, je voudrais encore une fois réaffirmer l'engagement de la Banque africaine de développement, de travailler avec l'ensemble des partenaires, mais surtout qu'on puisse euh, se met d'accord sur euh, des résultats tangibles et le fait qu'on a aujourd'hui des pays qui ont eu des résultats en matière de mobilisation des ressources additionnelles, je pense que c'est un résultat tangible dans un domaine qui est des économique économiques et financières. Par moment, contrairement peut-être à nos projets d'investissement, on a du mal à mesurer de façon palpable donc, les résultats. Donc ça, ça nous donne différents, euh, je prendrais un levier pour qu'on puisse travailler ensemble, un levier pour aller donc au-delà de l'engagement politique pour renforcer donc, ce travail au niveau technique, au niveau institutionnel, pour ensemble qu'on puisse donc amener plus de résultats, avoir plus de pays, avoir plus de résultats. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Sandri Lais. Merci pour votre contribution. Et maintenant, laissez-moi donner le floor à la prochaine panéliste, M. Marcelo Estevao. Global Director, Macroeconomics, Trade and Investment at the World Bank Group. Marcelo, Marcelo. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for inviting me to speak at the launch of this important report on tax transparency in Africa, 2020. We at the World Bank are proud to be a partner of the Africa Initiative, which is responsible for the report, by the way, that has a plethora of crucial information. For instance, the report shows that the overall volume of illicit financial flows from developing countries deprives governments of much needed resources for their basic services and development. 
two thirds of all illicit flows involve tax evasion or tax crimes. As the report highlights, African countries lose an estimated 40 to $8 billion due to tax evasion annually. This is huge. These are substantive resources foregone. Just to give you a sense of magnitude, net overseas development assistance received by African countries in 2017 amounted to only $52 million. Tax evasion also worsens equity imbalances, like was mentioned by, by Logan, as well as taxpayer, player, taxpayer compliance and trust. Hidden wealth, especially when it's held offshore, is a main driver of tax evasion. Globally, about 80% of offshore assets are held by the top 0.1% of households. As the reality of offshore tax evasion is uncovered through leaks such as Mauritius leaks, Paradise Papers, Mosaka Fonseca Papers, Luxembourg leaks, the fairness and integrity of national tax systems is undermined. This in turn reduces the willingness of all taxpayers to comply with their tax obligations. Public attitudes to tax compliance are heavily influenced by perception and the voluntary element of compliance can be badly eroded if others can evade their taxes by hiding assets offshore. This is quite important. Many African countries struggle with establishing and implementing legal structures that effectively combat tax evasion and tax crimes. Legal frameworks uh, that allow financial secrecy, particularly from legitimate govern government authorities, enable the commission of tax evasion, money laundering, and other harmful practices. Offshore tax evasion is facilitated by legal regimes that allow opacity of financial information and lacks enforcement of transparency regulations related to offshore entities, as well as ineffective anti-money uh, laundering frameworks. So combating tax evasion and illicit financial flows is a priority for the World Bank. At the end of 2019, donors committed $82 billion in financing for the bank's International Development Association, so-called IDA, over 2020 to 2023 to provide zero and low interest loans and grants to the 75 poorest countries in the world. In this context, the bank committed to supporting IDA countries with very low levels of in-tax collections, that is, countries that have a tax to GDP ratio below 15%, to raise this by an average of 1% of GDP. We also committed to supporting at least five countries to conduct comprehensive assessments of illicit financial flows and prepare action plans in addition to helping at least 20 other countries to take uh, IFF related policy actions such as increasing access to and awareness of beneficial ownership information and or, and or, or adopting automatic exchange of information to reduce tax evasion. The World Bank provides technical assistance to countries for meeting global standards on tax transparency, transparency and exchange of information, as well as building risk assessment systems to identify sources of risk transactions that could be vehicles for tax avoidance, tax evasion, and illicit flows. We have supported a range of African and non-African for that matter countries since 2013, uh, including Cameroon, Cape Verde, Ghana, Kenya, Liberia, Nigeria, Senegal, Tunisia, and Uganda. With introducing exchange of information request uh, on request legislation, rolling out of automatic exchange of information, implementing stricter standards on disclosing beneficial ownership in line with the financial task, action task force standards, and meet information confidentially uh, and actually meeting information confidentiality standards as a key requirement for exchange of information with other jurisdictions, all in, in accordance to, to the report that uh, Zaida just, just presented. In, in fact, increasingly tax transparency and international tax issues are also supported through our policy loans. These include recent policy loans to Cape Verde, uh, also Mar Mauritania, as well as four non-African countries, Indonesia, Panama, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent de Granadines. We have also embarked on a new initiative to better connect our work on illicit financial flows and tax. Specifically, we are adding a tax evasion module 
to our tool for national risk assessment, which diagnoses country weaknesses and threats related to money laundering. This would enable governments to better understand their risks for money laundering of, uh, of proceeds from tax evasion. It would also enable countries to adequately allocate resources and identify relevant elements of a whole of a, a whole of government approach to tackle illicit financial flows. Uh, we, we are discussing with various countries, including three from Africa, to pilot this new tax evasion module. Uh, and actually work has already started, I, I believe, with Kenya. So let me conclude with some lessons that we have drawn from our experience working with member countries to promote tax transparency. First, sustainable impact requires long-term investment with a focus on long-term improvements instead of one-fall infalls. Uh, such long-term progress requires change within the revenue authorities and across government and sustained support from the World Bank and other providers of support, all of you there around the table. Um, second, regional collaboration between countries and coordination across providers of capacity development support is key for success. Regional tax organization and ATAF in particular play a critical role in providing support on tax transparency to African countries and ensuring that such support meets the needs of our counterparts in tax administration and ministries of finance. We work very closely with ATAF, including through joint delivery of technical assistance. I would also like to highlight the, uh, here the close collaboration between bank teams and the OECD and Global Forum in providing support on the ground to countries in Africa. We have an ongoing effort to really coordinate our actions, including actually with the IMF as well. By working together, ensuring that voices from the region are well represented, I believe we magnify the impact of our work. The key word here is collaboration, hard work, and look at the long term. Thank you. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you very much for your highlights. And now let me give the floor to the last uh, panelist, Mr. Niel, Secretary General de, de Credaf. Please. Bonjour, Jean-Marc. Avant de commencer, pourriez-vous pourriez juste Good arrêter? morning, uh, Jean-Marc. Before you starting, could you check that uh, your interpreting, uh, interpreting channel is on off? Thank you. Monsieur Neil, Monsieur Neil, Jean-Marc. Mr. Neil, Mr. Neil. Voilà. Bien, écoutez, à mon tour de remercier. Well, it is uh, my turn now to thank the organizers from uh, for this uh, for inviting me to this uh, meeting, and uh, I would like to. Uh, say hello to uh, the 300 uh, participants uh, uh, attending this uh, meeting. But I, I don't want to repeat what the, pre the previous uh, speakers have said, but I'm very happy to uh, welcome the publication of this report. It's very important to be able to have this tool, which uh, enable to measure in an objective and regular way the progress made and what remains to be done. For 2019, I saw that the progress are, are really impressive, especially in uh, the field of uh, EOIR, uh, with uh, an increase in number, which is very significant. significant. Uh, this shows both the uh, joint mobilization of the various uh, uh, stakeholders and the uh, growing understanding and at all level of the potential of uh, administrative cooperation between states. And I'm very uh, sensitive to this because uh, I have uh, been uh, responsible for uh, tax audit uh, in uh, uh, my previous job. And uh, I must say that this is, uh, uh, you know, the exchange of information is absolutely key for this. Uh, we've seen also, and, and, you know, we've seen that uh, uh, the exchanges of information is more and more important and a priority for tax uh, authority, uh, authorities, and this is very important in terms of uh, organization of tax uh, administration. And of course, uh, uh, there are lots of progress to, due to this, but also there is still a lot to, that remains to be done. The result is quite uh, homogeneous, there are uh, 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 heterogeneous. 
So, first of all, let's uh, talk about the uh, automatic exchange of information. Um, um, you know, uh, this is a high te highly technical uh, subject and requires support, but there is also a lot to be done in, uh, uh, you know, awareness raising and in terms of uh, uh, training. Uh, the objective is that the international dimension of uh, tax auditing could be a true and very efficient leverage for tax administrations. Uh, it would help to uh, fight uh, illicit financial flows, uh, evasion and uh, uh, tax evasion and avoidance. I think that this is uh, uh, really uh, a very important uh, aspect of uh, uh, our approach. Uh, this is uh, uh, also in, in harmony with the Africa Initiative strategy uh, this, that is working on two uh, axes, that is raising uh, political awareness and uh, uh, stre strengthening capability, capability building. Uh, I think that indeed, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, very important uh, for Credat uh, to really Credat to see the uh, uh, the to see to it that there is training and dissemination of knowledge uh, uh, towards uh, tax administration. It's very uh, important for Credat. We are working uh, for uh, the collection, uh, management, and enhancement of data. We work more specifically on tax auditing. Last year, we have uh, uh, created a, a network uh, for. Uh, uh, tax audit uh, auditing pra practitioners and uh, the third uh, uh, work of the credat is uh, to work uh, on the organization of uh, tax administrations because i think uh, that uh, on information it's very important it should be very important to set up the uh, specialized specialized units um, because it is probably the best solution to professionalize this uh, uh, activity and we also have uh, intensified uh, the exchange between uh, and amongst the uh, people responsible for uh, tax administration. It is very important because the idea is to analyze uh, the, uh, uh, the way the exploitation, uh, the information uh, the, of the, uh, the information gathered is done. It must be secure and optimized. And I think uh, that uh, the tax auditing uh, work is highly technical and it contains a number of procedural traps. So it's very important that uh, people are really trained and it's easier to be trained together. A few words on the way we are going to continue to uh, uh, work for the Africa Initiative uh, within CREDAF. First of all, would like to say that we are going to continue the very strong partnership that we have between our secretariat so as to share the uh, latest news and to uh, enrich the discussion. Uh, I, I've been uh, Secretary General of CREDAC for two years and I've had many occasions to work with the uh, for, Forum Secretariat and I, I really think that it is essential and very positive. I think uh, that we are going to continue uh, uh, to invite uh, in Africa Initiative to uh, uh, our events. It's what uh, we invited them at the National General Assembly of CREDA. Uh, we also invited them to uh, join the uh, uh, work we do on uh, tax auditing. And I think that it can really help being in contact with various level of management in, in the administration. Somebody talked about uh, the operational uh, challenge and the uh, difficulty to get in touch with people who are really responsible for uh, tax work. Well, it, indeed, uh, we, uh, w what is uh, interesting is that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, it's important indeed to be in touch with general directors, but also the uh, managers who are in uh, uh, practitioners of uh, uh, the tax auditing. So, um, it, you know, we uh, can uh, through this also get in touch with uh, uh, members who are not yet member of the uh, forum, and uh, we can uh, in touch uh, with uh, uh, the uh, head of these organisations and show them the work that we're doing. I would like also uh, to say uh, uh, that uh, we all suffered from uh, uh, the COVID-19, and uh, but we managed to uh, work one way or the other. We will continue uh, 
uh, the organization of seminars, more specific uh, seminars and uh, technical meetings. And I would like to offer the Secretariat to uh, take initiatives in uh, uh, to that end. To conclude, I would like to say again, you know, that uh, TREDAF and especially its executive uh, bureau, uh, Secretary General, but also all the members uh, think that uh, the subjects defended by the global forum and especially in uh, uh, Africa initiative are very significant and important for the members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean-Marc. Merci beaucoup. Uh, and thank you all the speakers uh, for your insights. And uh, I will not repeat uh, how important this event and this uh, is for the Global Forum and how this report is in meaning for, for, for all the African countries. So uh, we are very short in time. So I, I just want to, to thank again the, the 32 African countries, uh, members of the Global Forum, and the three non-member countries for their precious contribution to this work and for sharing their experience, their success, but also their challenges. Africa has extraordinary women and men devoted to the work, making the life of brothers Frosters more difficult in contributing to the financing of the development of their countries. This is a very uh, positive story to which the engagement and the collaboration of the partners of the Africa Initiative has also contributed. I would like, I would like to thank the, the African Union Commission, African Tax Administration Forum, African Development Bank, CREDAF, West African Tax Administration Forum, World Bank Group and the Global Forum. The level of assistance and expertise offered to African countries by those partners is impressive. This was also made possible thanks to the continued support for the last five years of the donors of the Africa Initiative. Let me mention European Union, France, Norway, Switzerland and United Kingdom. And just before moving to the last part of the session, the uh, questions, I would also like to thank the attendees and journalists who will relay and tell this story. Thank you very much to all of you. And now, uh, I don't know if we have time for a couple of uh, questions and uh, from the, for the audience. Let me see. Well, I think uh, everybody's telling me that we are running very late and we will not take any other questions, uh, but most of them have been answered. So uh, they said we, we have answered almost all the questions uh, audience have raised. So I think uh, I just want to say thank you again and, uh, and, and I hope we see you in real life, <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know when, but I hope uh, this story is keeping uh, on. Thank you very much again, and um, see you soon. Bye, thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Maria Jose. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for a good seminar, and uh, good to see everybody. Uh, Julia A. and uh, Professor Harrison, we'll be in touch. Stay Thank safe. you all. Merci, au revoir à tout le monde. Thank you Merci very beaucoup. much for this report. African Union is an active observer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Ciao, Saida. Obrigado. Bye bye. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir, Monsieur Rissen. Au revoir bye. à tous. Au revoir. <laughs>